I cannot see. I'm legally blind. How's it going, everybody? My name is Salty, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the best controller settings here for you in Black Ops Cold War Season 4. All right, so when it comes down to horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity, this is all about preference. You guys need to figure out what works best for you. Don't let any of your friends, don't let anybody tell you differently. It's really all about you. I know people that play on 21-21 sensitivity and can shoot their gun extremely straight, but I also know people that play on 4-4 that are still fantastic Call of Duty players. The pros like to run low sensitivity. I know Warzone players that run basically the max sensitivity. I know people that play multiplayer that run max sensitivity. It's all about preference. I like to stick at a nice 8.8. It's right in the middle of, you know, really high and medium. So again, this is something you go into custom games, you shoot some bots, and you try to figure out what works best for you. Now the ADS low zoom and high zoom sensitivities, I go with 0.7. It just makes it extremely easy to track your targets with the aim assist. Um, you can bump this up if you feel like you're dragging behind them. You can bump it down if you feel like you're not keeping up with them enough. That's the great part of this sensitivity here. Um, again, a preference thing, something you guys really need to go into custom games and try out for yourselves. I don't really need to go over button layout or flipped or inverted look or even vibration. That's all preference things and things you got to work out for yourselves. But for the aim response curve type, this is one that I have really, really, really experimented with. And I found linear being the best one for me. So what it says for linear is aim sticks maps directly to aim rate. The aim stick curve is the same as the aim fire rate. I don't know what that means. But I found a ton of success and I found like I'm hitting a lot more of my target while I'm using this. Um, again, you guys can play around with it, but I definitely recommend giving linear a try if you haven't already. Obviously, being on controller, you're going to want target aim assist on. You don't want to run around without aim assist. It's just putting yourself at a big disadvantage there. No matter what all the mouse and keyboard players say, the aim assist is definitely needed. You cannot be as precise on a controller without the aim assist and there's no reason to not run it. And the target aim assist mode you want to go with is Legacy. This is what you, the Warzone people are used to. And I played a lot of Warzone back when it first came out. And I got really used to it. So Legacy is alternate aim slowdown near target. This aim assist type is default to Call of Duty Warzone. Um, it's probably the best one. Some of them, like focusing and precision, I find myself behind my target or locking onto other targets as they're walking by. This seems to be the most accurate, I should say. Um... I definitely recommend giving this a try as well. Now, I don't believe I've touched anything below the aim assist stuff here. We have airborne mantle behavior, behavior is automatic, aim down sight behavior is hold. You don't want to just tap your stick in ADS, it's just not worth it. Holding is how Call of Duty has always been played and I definitely recommend keeping that. Steady aim behavior, I'm not even sure what the heck this means, but just leave it alone. It's just like Call of Duty. You hold your stick, you let it go, it aims it on ADSs. Armor behavior, this is basically for fire team. I have an apply one. I don't really play fire team, but I'm assuming you're actually going to want that at apply all if you're playing, you know, mode where you need to apply all your armor. Um, I don't attack vehicle control mode, aim based. I don't even know what this is. Haven't played really any other modes other than the multiplayer here. For stick layout, I have default. ADS stick swaps, I have disabled. Now, the dead zones are a question that a lot of people ask, but this is something only you can know. It's based on your controller. If you are having problems with stick drift or you're having problems where you can't sprint, this is where you find the problems. So I always leave the input thresholds the same at 10, but for me, my controller has a problem with sprinting. I'm very aggressive on the controller and I feel like I push too hard down on them. Dropping this to 50 makes it so I only have to push it a little bit for my guy to sprint. And this right stick is for your aiming. If you find yourself drifting to, drifting to the right or left, this will fix it for you. The biggest way you can realize this is if you drop into a game, don't touch your controller and your guy starts to move right or left, you can adjust it so he doesn't move at all. This is just, again, things you have to play around with. A very important setting that I think people don't know about is auto sprint. Auto sprint, you just push forward on your controller and he sprints. But another thing is you can slide cancel just by aiming down the sights. If you hold down to slide in ADS, it'll make your guy stand right back up, which if you don't have auto sprint on, it doesn't do that. You have to double tap slide and then hit your jump button to make it slide cancel. This just makes it a ton easier. There's no reason to not run it. 
It's just like Warzone with auto tax sprint. It's just an advantage for you and you should definitely be running it. Now into the graphics settings. One of the big questions I get asked a lot is my color blind. I go with Tritonopia. Just makes the people stand out a ton more. It puts like gr their, their names in green, lime green above their head. And I know visibility is a tough one in this game. But since I've switched to Tritonopia here, I've had no problems. You can pick whatever colors you want here and they're extremely bright. For me, I use yellow for myself. I use blue for my ally teammates, lime green for the enemies, and lighter blue if I'm running in a party. It's lime green here. This is the most important thing. You need to see your enemies. It doesn't matter. It does change the flags in the map, but once you play and get used to it, you don't notice really at all. And again, this just really helps the visibility. For field of view, I like to run 100. This is a preference thing. I'm on console, so you're definitely going to need to figure out what's good for you. I find myself losing enemies at 120 just because of the frame rate of consoles. It's not like PC, and I don't really see the need to run 120 FOV when you're playing on small maps like you are in multiplayer. But if you like to run 120, I can't hold it against you, but definitely bumping it up. Don't want to run 60 or 80. 100 is probably the minimum I would go. It has made my game so much better. And ADS field of view, affected. You need to run affected. It will change your life. It basically makes it zoom in while you aim down the sights. It kind of gives rid of some recoil, if you want my opinion. It doesn't actually get rid of recoil, but the visual recoil gets removed. And a lot of people accuse me of using a strike pack or something like that. I use a controller. It's not plugged in, as you can see. There's nothing on it. It's a normal scuff. Um, the, this ADS field of view being affected is one of the big reasons. All right, one of the last settings I want to discuss is motion blur. There's no reason you should have this on. Um, it's really to make it feel realistic, but let's be honest. Call of Duty is not realistic. You're going to lose enemies if you're spinning really fast and there's some blur. Not only will it make you dizzy if you stream or make videos, it will make other people dizzy. No one's a fan of motion blur. Turn it off. All right, so I got some gameplay with the LC10 for you guys. Um, so you guys can see what my settings do in game. If you guys are new to the channel, would like to find your way back for more videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button for me. That'd be absolutely awesome. And I will be eternally grateful. If you like what you see, make sure you also smash the like button as that's the most effective way to support the channel. Hope you guys enjoy this gameplay. Secure the objective. Yeah, basically. Yeah. There's no one on Hill, and there's no one at Eskies, so they're chucking 97 grenades at me. I'm dead. I got hit with three stuns, a grenade, and... I am getting smoked. Everywhere I think they're not going to be, they are. Open to my life. He's picking his nose with his elbow in the spawn. Wow, this gameplay has been literally, I've done nothing so far. Hello, AFK. Take your fire, Bendigo. Why is this playing so damn slow? I killed whale sounds. Where are these grenades coming from? These grenades keep just falling out of their asses as I kill them. You just saved my life, by the way. I panic punched the kid. Duda, Duda. We're 
da de de do da de. I mean, I'm probably gonna get a nuke, but like, damn, this is slow. I feel like I'm just running back and forth. I think there's another one back there. Well, I got a nuke, I guess. Like, <laughs> sure. Weird game. Finally using my war machine. Hey! Okay, get away from me. weird game. Oh, that kid just beamed me. I heard you got your nuke. Yeah, I haven't died since I've gotten my nuke. I'm taking off War Machine. I can't even get kills with you in the lobby. I died. Can I call my nuke or are you still on the street? Pulling 
I somehow managed to get 60 plus kills in this lobby. How slow it was playing. No. Don't call your nuke because I'm on a streak. Actually, you know what? I'm calling mine. I don't care. You can call yours after. If you guys enjoyed the video, you guys can make sure you hit that like button for me. That'd be absolutely awesome. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you also hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.